out here getting started on some firewood processing. This is something that we've been putting off a little bit this year. We have some logs lying around that we need to get processed and we just in general need to get the gears rolling. We need to get our wood stash um, up, up again. So we were really fortunate when we moved here, we had quite a bit of wood already. The previous owner probably left like four cords behind, which was great because we came here last winter just for some trips. And then when we moved here in April, we actually didn't have to bring any wood. We just started digging into the stash behind me. Generally, Eric and I burn about four to five cords. That's what it's been every year. And when I say years worth of wood, I'm not necessarily just referring to a winter. So what I'm talking about is from summer to summer. That's how we gauge our firewood. We don't really burn wood all that often in the summer, but I want to say that we definitely start burning by late August and we burn all the way until May. So it's definitely a longer portion of the year that we are having fires going in the house. Personally, I don't think four to five cords is that shabby for living in Alaska. It depends obviously on the size of your house. We live in a smaller house here and our old cabin was pretty small too. It depends on your stove and it depends on the wood that you are burning as well. We burn predominantly just spruce. Every once in a while we can get our hands on some birch and that makes a pretty big difference. The stove here is a lot smaller, but it seems to be quite a bit more efficient than that big old one we had back at the other place. That was just huge and it would crank, so I was grateful for that, but it it was a very inefficient stove. Some of the wood that Eric was just backing up in the trailer is from our old cabin. We left uh, probably like six cords or so there. We always try to stay a year ahead, so we would process our wood in the summer to fall months, and I think we'd have like seven cords going into winter, so we always had a dry set for that year and then some additional for the next year. It's mid-November. We picked a chilly brisk day to do this, but we've got to get the trailer unloaded first and then hopefully we can actually get on to cutting some other wood. Pretty big load this time around. What we did is we added some taller sides to the trailer. Now, this load is about double as big as the load we brought back last time. This is about two cords. It's mostly spruce, but we do have some birch in here, which looks like that, and it's a lot heavier. All of this wood is seasoned and ready to burn, and birch is about as good as it gets for us. We're setting a bunch of birch aside, actually, because we're gonna go on a, uh, I guess camping trip or a cabin trip pretty soon and we prefer to bring birch because it burns a lot longer for us and this load has like some smaller pieces of wood the first load we brought up we had like some real big ones because we were cutting them for our old wood stove but these should all fit perfectly inside our small wood stove here at this cabin kind of creepy yeah i know it's a frozen mustache Tis the season. Looking good. Good start. We've got the tractor warming up. It's a cold day today. It's three degrees Fahrenheit right now. We're gonna sharpen the chainsaws and we're gonna take care of this pile we got over here. 
Under this snow, we have a pile of wood, and this is wood that we've collected around the property since the spring, and it's either like a dead or aspen or too small to use on the mill. So we're gonna turn all into firewood. Most of it is green wood, so it's not ready to burn yet, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it with the tractor and we're gonna bring it behind the woodshed. The woodshed has a door on each side. We're gonna cut it into rounds and we're gonna leave it on the ground. So let's get it done. She, I heard her all the way over here kind of, it didn't sound too pretty. Any colder, we're gonna have to start plugging it in. I think, I think we hit the any colder. Yeah. I, don't I think know what, we need to start plugging her in. Honestly, I don't know what we're going to use the tractor for next after this. Snow plow, maybe? That's a nice stack of wood we've got there. We have some wood that the owner left on the other side of the woodshed, and I think it's still good. I don't think it's been there that long. So we're gonna get that cut up and then get some kindling and head inside for the night. Like working hard after a hard day of work. This is nice wood though. This couldn't have yeah. been around for 10 years. No, it's dry. Think. It had a tarp on it though. So. That's how you warm up in the morning.
gonna break your hand. One handed. Sounds like a wind chime. Yeah, it does like bamboo ones, huh? Yeah. I was wondering what that sound reminded me of. Oh, I love wind chimes. I got some more to leave if you want to know about them. The other one out here, you're stopping now. Now we just bring a couple armfuls up and When you got the wood stove going, it makes sense to cook in the wood stove. So what we've been doing lately, and we've really enjoyed it, is we have some tin foil and we wrap a potato in there. This is a russet potato, and this time we have olive oil, garlic escape butter, and salt and pepper. You put these in here in the coals for about 30 minutes. It is like the best potato I have ever had. So I'm gonna scoot the coals around in there. We'll throw these in, and Ariel's gonna make us some squash and carrots to go with these. Bon appetit, a perfect meal for the end of today. And the vegetables are dusted with some brown sugar and rosemary and sage. So we're gonna enjoy this and eat.
Getting started on breakfast for another day out in the cold and Ariel requested omelets. So we're doing potatoes. We have a little salami in there and some onions. Those are almost cooked and we're gonna add some mushrooms and we are pretty happy with the way that these canned mushrooms turned out. You can use them in different ways and you can use dried ones, which is usually how we make them. So we're gonna chop some of these up, fry them up. We'll add a tomato, a little cheese, and we'll have ourselves some omelets. Our modifications we did to the chicken coop have been working out awesome. We got 12 eggs yesterday and 12 eggs the day before. So they are pumping them out. That is a pullet egg. So a pullet is a chicken. Well, I guess this is a hen now. A pullet is a young chicken. So they lay a little bit of a smaller egg to start with and then they get big, kind of like a full-size chicken egg. Maybe I'll give you one extra because that was a little one. Another one too. You got all three. Watch Should out for those cool. huge bolts. Oh, I was gonna put it the other way. We'll probably just set on the top. So you can take the top off, start it, and then just put the top back on. We're gonna make an insulated generator box for our Kohler generator. This is the one I've been using to charge up the batteries on the chicken coop when we're not getting any sun. And it runs pretty good in cold temperatures. It's doing all right right now, but it's gonna get a lot colder. So we're gonna build this box for it. And I had a bunch of old foam that was here when we, uh, when we bought the place that we're gonna use for the insulation. We've got plywood and we're gonna make this thing movable by the tractor. And it's also gonna be movable by the snow machine. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna build some sort of like skids or like a skid system for it using two by fours. And I think what we're gonna do is have them up on end. I'm gonna angle the cut right here on each side and that'll allow us to pull it around with the snow machine. Like a 45. Now I'll get my triangle. that type of thing. Oh, nice. Hey, Jamie, that's beautiful. Very nice. Oh, that's a nice straight one. Here. Gosh. Bam! 
him uh, pleasure in this? It's never the answer. Here, here. <laughs> oh, yeah, this one. This one's snug. Nice. Nice. This thing is coming together awesome, and I was just thinking about it. Every Everything on here is reused, even a lot of the screws I got from a garage sale. So let's uh, show you what we're working with so far. We're using two inch foam board, and this is gonna be the lid. We've gotta cut it down a little bit more. But the bottom, we were, first we're gonna do foam, but I think we're just gonna leave the Reflectix on the bottom. So that's where the generator's gonna sit, and we got two inch foam plus reflect, Reflectix on each side. And we'll have the generator in there when you wanna start it or do maintenance on it or shut it off. You're gonna have to take the lid off. You can pull the generator, and then once it's running, we'll put the lid on. Something like that, and the lid will just kinda sit on the top. Is she empty? No, no. Oh. half full. So you go like that. Well, see, our exhaust is right here. Okay. So I'm going to punch a hole right there, like a three-inch hole. The exhaust will come out. Okay. And then the intake on this is right here. Where's the intake? Right here. Just like that. Can you pull it by yourself? Me? Yeah. So this is the old uh, box for the generator. When it got really cold, uh, I just put the wheelbarrow over it. It actually seemed to work pretty good. But we're done with this for this year. This was the old little plate. All right, let's get that thing close enough to plug it in. Maybe like right. Oh, you know what we didn't do? We gotta drill a hole to put the extension cord in. So I gotta drill one more hole. Okay. test this box and we're gonna see how warm it gets in there after running this generator for a little while uh, I'm not sure how cold it is outside right now because I just brought this outside it says it's uh, I guess it'll be this one it says it's 17 degrees outside but it's still dropping I'm guessing it's a little closer to zero but I'm gonna put this one in the box and it'll tell us how warm it gets in there Funny looking chicken, huh? You grabbed her? She was sitting right there. Look at her. <laughs> How warm is it in there, huh? 40. But I mean, if it's negative 40 or something, that's gonna make a huge difference. It's not that cold today. What does it say it is?
zero degrees outside and inside the generator box right now. It's 61 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's turn up the generator real quick and we're gonna talk a little more about it. So I went pretty good. It was running pretty good. I, I made a few adjustments. The first thing that happened is it was kind of shaking in there and the cord that charges the coop pulled out. So I, I just basically pulled more cord in there and it seems to be holding in there. The second thing that happened is the exhaust, while it was shaking, it shook off. So it was just filling this whole thing with exhaust and it wasn't running good. So I clamped the exhaust on. So I have to take that off with the screwdriver if I need to get it off, which is no big deal. And I believe that it's not getting enough fresh air. So what I did is I drilled two more intake holes we have one on the three sides and then we have the hole in the front where the plug is. We're gonna be using this generator in all different kinds of temperatures. So it's zero today. It's obviously gonna get hotter in there than if it's like negative 40 outside. It got really hot in here. I had the lid on just regular and it got to 91 degrees in there, which I mean, I don't think that's too warm for a generator run, but it started to get a little bit funky. So what I did was I put the lid on there and I just stuck a piece of wood and I had it cracked and it got us down to like the 60 degrees mark, which is awesome. And the reason we want to keep this generator in an insulated box is sometimes the air outside is so cold that anything will want to freeze inside the generator. So what usually happens with this one is the crankcase vent tube or the carburetor, it'll freeze any moisture it can get, whether it's in the air or in the fuel. So if you keep things hot, it'll just burn that water or the moisture. It won't freeze up in there. Overall, I'm going to say we're pretty happy with it. And I charged the chicken coop for, I don't know, about an hour. So they're going to be good for a couple of days. It's looking good now? Yep. Good to go. We are out here feeding our friends, and I don't just mean the chickens. We're also going to be restocking some of our bird feeders. So we have a few of various little bird feeders around here. I actually want to build a lot more, but we haven't had time to do that maybe when we have the shop next year. And we got these clear bird feeders last spring that stick or suck onto the window for the cat, and those provide her just hours of entertainment in the winter when she doesn't want to go outside. So she loves those. We're gonna give this to the um, chickadees right now. We have Boreal chickadees and then there's a little white crown sparrow hanging around here. The previous owner, I think he was kind of fond of feeding the wildlife. So there was, well, he was fond of feeding birds. So there was a lot of bird seed. And we also have a really tall bird feeder post back back over by the house. Usually because we feed the chickens like whole seed like this, we will end up having wild birds come around and they like mainly the uh, black oil sunflower seeds. So that seems to be their favorite, but we're gonna put a little mix of just a bunch of stuff that we have for them. Seems like they're eating just the sunflower seeds. Yeah. Mainly. There's Milo in there or millet? Is it millet or Milo? Millet. Back there is the bird feeder, or I guess the post that uh, came with this place, and that's about 10 feet tall. And then I found this under the deck, and it's an old jug and a stick, and you put the bird feed in there and you just drop it in. Let's knock some of the snow off and get some feed up there. Whoa, you already had some feed in there. There's some feed in there. Just... 